So after we completed our home network setup, we upgraded all the infrastructure, but there was one more upgrade that we needed to have, to do. And that was the addition of a network attached storage or a NAS from D-Link. So this is the D-Link share center. It's a four bay network attached storage, but it's also a cloud storage solution. So what does that mean? Basically, it shares your storage on your home network, as well as you can access it from outside your network, just like how you would on a cloud system. So let's dive straight into it. So in this box is the four bay share center and the D-Link DNS 430L. It's a four bay cloud network storage enclosure. So to cut things short, it has 128 megabits of flash and 512 megabits of uh, S standard RAM or read write RAM, right? Basically, and it takes three and a half inch uh, drives. It has two gigabit ethernet ports, as well as three USB ports, a USB 2.0 port and two USB 1.0 ports. So it's capable of a vast array of things. Uh, as I mentioned, the cloud storage solution. And then it also can do things like, uh, like what we have running on our server with Plex. It, ha it can run DNLS, which is your media streaming service and a lot of other things, but we're not gonna get too far into that. So with regards to drives, it can take up to a maximum capacity of 24 terabytes, but we didn't go that high. So basically we looked around for drives and then we made some friends over at Tech It All. So Tech It All sent us our four drives and they hooked us up with an amazing price. So the guys over at Tech It All have hooked us up with an amazing price on these drives and they're hooking you guys up as well. So you guys get 5% off anything on their store and all you have to do is use code FIRSTTIME5. So the drives we chose were Seagate's Ironwolf 2TB 3.5 inch drives that have 64 megabytes of read write cache. So physical setup with this is virtually nothing. All we have to do is open the back panel of this and then get to installing our drives. And all we have to do is physically just push in the drive and make sure you hear the click. Make sure you're pushing the drive in the right way. And then all we have to do is close our panel back. So uh, now that we have our drives installed, the physical setup process is complete and now all we have to do is plug this into mains and connect it to our network and then continue the setup on the NAS itself. So once the drives have been installed, all you have to do is hook up your ethernet cable and then connect up your power adapter. and then plug it in. You can hear the drive spinning up. But other than that, it's absolutely silent. And then now we're going to jump over to the PC. So what happens, basically the NAS 
grabs an IP address from your router. So we have to find out what our IP address is. So what we have to do is go to our router 10.0.0.4 and then we log in. And then from there, uh, we go to status. Uh, it'll tell us all the devices on our network. And I can see 10.0.0.14 is the D-Link um, the D-Link 1B4195 so there's no other D-Link devices that's supposed to be on our network so that's most probably our NAS so let's just go there and let's go system admin and I think the password should be blank right so first thing right off the back we have to set up and reformat all our drives although they are brand new we have to set our RAID type and format all our drives so it says welcome to your hard you have to physical drive rah, 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 rah. so let's say next so it's picking up our four Seagate uh, iron wolf drives it's got their serial numbers and their two terabyte size click next we are going with a raid 5 setup and what it is basically is you have your four drives one two three four and in each drive there's a little bit of space that copies the next drive it's called a parody and basically what it does is if one drive fails you have enough information uh, split up amongst all the other drives in that parody space so that you can rebuild your array instead of use, losing all the information on your entire array so basically um, RAID 0 is that it writes across all the drives and RAID 1 is it mirrors so what's on A will be on B and what's on C will be on D uh, and RAID 5 is basically it writes across like this and there's a there's a tiny bit distributed like if it's writing a little bit on A and then a third of, of A will be in the second drive a third of B uh, of A will be in the uh, third drive and a third of A will be on the fourth drive. It's too hard to explain. Basically, if the drive, if one drive fails, it can rebuild the entire array. And it's unlikely to have a, something like that in such a low UK use case of a drive, but uh, or such a low use case scenario in high usage scenarios, then stuff like that happens. But it's unlikely that it's going to happen, but we have to protect ourselves even though we aren't saving like critical information and we're having backups done and, and everything like that. I think I've spoken a little bit too much about RAID 5. Let's just select it and say next. And then, so now, what it's doing, it's doing all the, the RAID stuff uh, in the background. And then we're ending up with 5.5 terabytes worth of storage it's not a lot but it's more than enough for its use case and then it's creating one volume with the five drive so basically one drive with the that's built up of the other four drives that we have installed so let's click next and then this selection rebuild the array if it becomes corrupt so click next we have to enable auto rebuild what 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 and then there's our array next enable it and auto mount our thing so now we have to format our drives you are about to reformat your hard drives all the data will be erased yeah you can do that drives are brand new so it's partitioning and doing all that stuff once the formatting is done then that's it basically everything is up and running so the one thing i need to change is the network management uh, it's in network management and what I want to do is give it a static IP address. 10.0.0.5 is going to be our NAS. And then it's taken us to 10.0.0.5. And let's log in. Now, so the good thing with the share link is you can have files you can actually actively store surveillance and then also have your applications uh, running on the share center 
as it is after we've configured configured our drives and everything um, if we just open up a new uh, Windows Explorer file browser and we go to network we can see our NAS is already showing up with its volume there so it's already working but there is some fine-tuning things like personalization I'd like to do create users who can access different parts of the the NAS as well as different folders that are available to different users and some of the other things are so as I said you can have D-Link My Surveillance so like the camera that we reviewed of D-Links um, which is if you'd like to see that video video is linked up there like that camera that camera can record directly to the share center and some of the applications so now as I was telling you guys you can uh, access your NAS from the web so a lot of people ask you know what how do you access it from outside your network and this NAS actually has built-in capabilities so you can do it with the D-Link My NAS application so after our configurations are complete now all we have to do is place our NAS here and complete our home network setup we just have to place it down there and configuration everything's done we just have to put power and then patch it into the NAS or, or patch the NAS into the network so now power is in and then as I said in our home network upgrade things like the server the NAS and all the switches are connected directly to the router and it's not router to router like a daisy chain basically it just takes longer and it's a whole long story why I don't want to do that all it is Ethernet cable here we're going to be connecting one other cable what I've done is I've configured our printer to connect directly to the NAS and you can print from there no longer requiring you to have an actual PC on or anything for you to print so it connects directly to the NAS and you can print off the NAS